There's another one now. Pets are fun. Yes, they are. Announcer man is here. When gone am I, the last of the Jedi will you be. Thanks for listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your host, Rish Outfield. You are a short-sighted, utterly useless, oxygen-wasting human form of pollution, a selfish coward. Big Anklevich. You're a fun, solid, respectable human being. And Rish Outfield. If your brain was donated to science, science would return it. Did you really say that? Don't be a pillock. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. You never thought it would happen, y'all. It's the last triple word score story ever. My name's Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield. Is really the last one ever? Yep. So we're not well, doing the well, contest we, again? I guess we could do the contest again, but it's the last of this contest anyways. We finally made it. Yes, it's 2016, and I think we started the contest in 2009, but here we are, done. The last story, you're hearing it. You know, I've been in the triple word business so long, now that it's over, I, <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Well, have you uh, considered piracy? You'd make a great Dread Pirate Roberts. Okay. I mean, no one would surrender to the Dread Pirate outfield. That's right. So, yeah, we're here with the final story uh, of this round, at least, of the Triple Word Score. And the story is from the man sitting right on my right-hand side, Mr. Rish Outfield. Cue the hate mail. And it is called Greetings from the Ninth Sector. I believe... Sunny C produced this for us. That's right. Again and again and again. How many times would you say he produced this for us? Well, he sent us several copies, although it's hard to believe that that ever happened because it's been so long that he actually sent it to us. Why? Well, I've forgotten. Sonny probably doesn't even remember that he produced this thing. Is he's always he always goes above and beyond, and to the side. But yeah, he he made a movie. A video. Yes, he did. For it. And he did one with like all sorts of effed up sound effects and music. And then he sent us an email. I just was reading the email a minute ago where he's like, oh, you know, I, I think the music was too loud. Let me, I'm going to do another version. And th- as far as I know, there's no music in this one. So it makes <laughs> me wonder how many versions did Sonny do? Maybe we just have the first version and we never got the, the final version for real. Oh, sh- shoot. Shazbot, I mean. Shazbot. There's one of them now. Should we talk to him and say, hey, is the version we're playing on the show right now all right for you? I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, I guess I was going to ask you, do we need to explain the triple word score story again? Well, we might as well. We've done it like 15 times, and this is our last chance. So ready? Can you do it in one big long breath? Breathe deep and go. The triple word score story is everyone got three words at random. They had to incorporate them into the story. It had to be 2,000 words or fewer and use those three words in some way and make it by the deadline. (laughs) Very good. What, what, What did I leave out? I think you actually added in extra stuff. (laughs) <laughs> so I think you did just fine. What were your three words, or are we going to have people guess again like you did last time? I only remember one of the three words, so I, I don't know. Do you know what the three words were? I knew what two of the words were, and oh, there's another one now. <laughs> so does that make three? I, my math skills have never been particularly strong. Um, I don't remember what the three words I remember one of your words, and you probably remember the exact same word. Don't you think that's a little too on the nose, Rish? Okay. Uh, there was a little time slip there. Uh, well, let's say it's a long time slip because it took us a long time using our phones for some reason to find your three words. But your three words were... Oh, crap. What were they? Report. One. Squads. Two. George Lucas. And George Lucas. Three. So let's see what came of that. 
Uh, I say on to the story. If you say so. Good night. Thank the Dune Steve is produced <laughs> under a creative cl- cl- clomens. Wow, no, we're going to the story. Go, roll story. Greetings from the Ninth Sector by Rish Outfield. 5 3 2106. 1 43 p.m. This is Cor- Cor- Corporal Bruce J. Otterson. Ar- 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 Five three twenty one oh six one forty three PM Hey Mandy Greetings from the ninth sector. The rest of my squad are working out in the rec deck. But Sergeant Bradley said that due to our speed, these messages will take about a month to arrive, so I had to get up here and send one to you. I just saw you yesterday, but for you, it's been five weeks. I'll send one every day, let you know how it's going. Okay, this is Corporal Bruce J. Otterson aboard the IFS George Lucas. We received our orders today with good and bad news. Good news is our destination is the Mao B station all the way over in 11. I know, pretty exciting. That's really only a 12-day trip for me. Well, 12 each way. But the bad news is, for you, it'll be a year. Or just under a year, I'm not sure. You may know this by now, but I just found out. Oh, and because nobody ever goes to Mile B, we're getting hazard pay for some reason. Everybody in the squad is excited, and they all have theories. My bunkmate, Alexei Urasich, is a real Steve when it comes to space travel. So when he fills me in, I'll do the same for you. We've got a whole drop colony we're delivering to the base, and we get to meet them tonight. Honey, I'd better go, but I'll talk again as soon as I can. 5-4-2106, p.m. Hello, man. So, Alexi said his uncle was on a transport that came through here 20-something years ago, and they had all sorts of scary experiences. Hallucinations, mysterious illnesses, people losing their minds. We haven't seen anything scary here. Just a lot of space and lots of colonists. There are 341 of them, all headed for Mile B, mostly women and kids. I got assigned a group of about 50, so that keeps me busy. They're a religious bunch, but they must be an all-inclusive sect because there's all shapes and sizes among them. Three of the colonists are even blind. Can you imagine? I never met a blind person before yesterday, and now I've met three. Poor things. This one, Loretta, lost her vision in an accident. The other two were born blind, so it's worse for her. I asked why she didn't just get B eyes, and she said her sect believes implants are unnatural. Like space travel is natural? Talking with her reminded me what a good thing I have with you, Mandy. I miss your smooth skin. Your voice and the way you smell, especially when Alexi takes his boots off at night. Five five twenty one oh six twelve forty one PM It's me again, obviously. Found out where our ship got its name. Back in the nineteenth century or something, George Lucas was a science fiction author. Supposedly a big deal, like Wells or Bradbury. Turns out all Verne-class transports are named after famous writers. Boring to me, not to Alexi. My colonist group are to come to me with their problems or concerns, but they almost never complain. Sarge Bradley made it sound like we'd be babysitting for 12 days, but even the blind ones take care of themselves. I asked Loretta if an eye transplant would be permitted. There's no opportunities for an unmarried woman to get a procedure like that. She thinks if she marries the right colonist, he'd help her get the procedure. I think she wants me to set her up with, like, the most eligible bachelor in our group. I told her about you and our engagement. She said you sound beautiful. 
I said she had no idea, which was cruel when I look back now. I wonder if you'll look different when I come home. Look forward to it either way. Gotta go. 5-6-2106-9.55 p.m. Mandy, Brew here. Alexi just left. I'll take advantage of my moment alone. So I got your vid mail today. Very, uh, uh, stimulating. Guess you miss me, too. I was tempted to play it for lonely old Alexi, but I figured it was for my eyes only. Thanks for that. We're now in the Kosa Zone, which is the weird area of space that old sailors talk about. It's not really on any maps, so who knows when we entered it. Alexi's uncle Anatoly came here, and he ended up a little crazy. Captain Crabb says it's just a superstition, but we should report anything irregular. The strangest sight I had is a hideous bird one of the colonists is breeding. It's a turkey, like a huge chicken, only uglier. Pets are fun. 5-7-2106. 12-56 p.m. Hey, Mandy, it's Brew. I had my first hallucination today. I was in the exercise center when I looked over and saw a giant brown bird running on a treadmill. It was Simon Stab's turkey I told you about. A minute later, I looked and there was no one on the treadmill. We're supposed to report anything unusual to Lieutenant Ellenshaw, but there's a cue to talk to him. Guess everybody's seeing things. Alexi sometimes sees worms, he told me. That has been going on since he came on board. That's worse than giant chickens, I think. Oh, Loretta Lorenga, the woman I told you about? She hallucinated her father came in and talked to her. She heard his voice and saw his face, even though she hasn't seen anything since she was nine years old. It really messed her up. She enjoyed it and wants to have another one. Her father's dead. That's what gave me the shivers. I thought I'd have Alexi talk to her. Corporal Urisich is a good guy. You'd like him. I think I'll invite him to the wedding. I'll ask him when he comes back in. Talk to you later, man. 5-8-2106. p.m. I couldn't talk yesterday because one of the kids in my group of colonists ran away during the night. He hasn't come back. And then, before lights out yesterday, three other colonists and a technician were reported missing. We're on alert now. I haven't had any more visions, at least. I did hear Alexi talking to someone in the dark this morning, so he's either seeing something more vivid than worms, or he's a sleep talker. All the colonists are talking about devils and gods not wanting the settlers in Sector 11. I'm too tired to deal with it. My arms ache. I think I'll skip the exercise at least today. Maybe take a nap. Gotta go. 5 9 1101 p.m. Corporal Otterson to Mandolin Whitlock. I got another message from you. No, no aliens out here so far. It didn't occur to me that our little trip would be on the news but I guess it's been eight years since anyone came through here. You changed your hair in the vid you sent. You're pretty however you slice it, but I hope you'll let your hair grow out for when I get back. I'm only saying. Uh, I guess I should tell you the bad news. Four more people have gone missing since I last sent a message. One of them I knew, a colonist named Newcomb. Nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody knows. Check the landing skiffs, and none have been taken out. Alexi thinks they've gone crazy and ejected themselves out into space. Ship doesn't work like that, not without letting every monitor know what's being done. So they're here. Someplace. Tomorrow morning, we're doing a ship-wide search. The whole squad is starting aft and combing until we find our missing people. I'm going to be on the upper level, so I'm probably going to get dirty. Wish me luck. 
Five ten. Twenty one oh six. Seven twenty three p.m. Well, we found them. Not me. No, they they were in the skiff bay. Seventeen of them. Yeah. Seventeen bodies. Only eleven had even been reported missing. Most were shot. Two were bludgeoned. Alexi thinks they were probably stunned first, then carried to the skiff bays where they got dead stunned there. I didn't see the bodies, but he did. Said some were mutilated. Now everybody's nervous. Crew says it was the soldiers, the soldiers say it was the colonists, and the colonists say it's the will of the gods. I think it's one of them. Since off-world relocators are rebels or crazies or in trouble with the law... I worry about Loretta, once she's alone on Mile B without a soldier to protect her. You hear that? Um, five, five twelve, twenty one oh six, twelve fifty three p.m. Alexi has lost his mind, Mandy. In the night. He hit me with something. You can see the mark here. I heard him ranting about worms and extraterrestrials. When I turned on the lights, Alexi's eyes went wild, like a different person. I told him I'd help him if I could, but that was the wrong answer, I guess, because he came at me with a pack splitter. I was lucky. He was so sweaty the blade slipped in his hand. Then I moved fast. Remember my dad saying Krav Maga was for Reggie's? Well, who's the Reggie now? Anyway, I managed to stick Alexi in my clothes closet and thumbed it locked. He was making a real racket there, but he's real quiet now. Asleep? I don't know who to tell. Alexi said Sergeant Bradley's on his side, not a traitor like the others. Like me! He said Captain Crabb gave him a special mission that will be carried out with or without him. Us soldiers don't take orders from the ship's captain. I'm scared, Mandy. Anybody could be a part of it. Alexi shouted that if I squealed him out, I'd better be sure it wasn't to the wrong person, or I'd end up in the skiff bay, missing parts. I wish I was back home with you. I've got to go. 5-13-2106. a.m. Alexi's gone. He must have broken through my closet in his own and thumbed himself out. He could be anywhere, gathering his people against me. I could talk to one of the medics, or the Sarge. But the last thing Alexi says was, We're all in on it now, Bruce. Like it was an alien mental takeover. I'm actually believing that stuff now, man. I think I'll go to the colonist quarters and make sure Loretta's okay. She and her group are my responsibility. The only ones I can trust. It's possible I can hack into the environmental controls. Or maybe I could gas Alexi and the others, or make it so cold they all fall asleep. It might kill all the worms, at least. If I don't make it, I love you and I miss you. Wish me luck. 5-15-2106 Eight fifty seven PM and Hello, Miss Whitlock. I'm Sergeant Ramon Bradley with some bad news. Your friend, fiance, Corporal Otterson, has had a breakdown. He was caught tampering with the environmental systems of the civilian section of the ship yesterday. He claims he had help, but the colonists all seem afraid of him. Apparently, he was lowering the internal temperature in an attempt to kill or incapacitate everyone on board. This is difficult to say. Otterson seems to have had a split with reality shortly after boarding. It may have started when his assigned bunkmate, Alexei Yurisich, choked to death at the pre-flight banquet. Records show the corporal filed reports for Yurisich, even sending his clothes down to laundry. One of the colonists, a blind girl, said Otterson spoke of him as being alive. Otterson appears to have a fixation with the girl. He attacked 
and mutilated several crew members and civilians and stashed their bodies on a lower deck. He removed some of their eyes and placed them in the blind girl's quarters. I'm sorry. I know this has to be upsetting. You're listed as next of kin in his file, and it's undecided how to charge Corporal Otterson. He insists he's innocent, that there's a conspiracy against him. Gods, this has been a terrible trip. We arrive at Mau B tomorrow, and I hope they can clear the ship of vermin. I've killed three centipedes just today. There's another one now. 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 Okay, welcome back. There's another one now. <laughs> ah, yeah, there, there, there is another one now. Um, pets are fun. Yes. So, th- hey, thank you, Sonny, for the many times you produced that episode. Usually, guys, uh, when we ask somebody to produce a story for us, they are only required to do it once. Or in uh, Scott Pig's case, none at all. But, <laughs> but yes, yeah, Sonny, uh, he's just not content with doing things uh, straightforwardly. Not straightforwardly. What's the word the, I'm looking for? The easy way. The easy way. So the whole cassette playback format that he did on that... Can we talk about that for a minute, or do we, do we talk about the three sure, words? Sure, we can what we talk, talk about it. How did you think, I, I noticed as we listened to the story, that you really enjoyed, I think at first you're like, what the boop is he doing? This is a story about a space exploration, and they're using tape recorders? But as it went through, every time the tape would be like, and stuff, you enjoyed that immensely. Well, it was always on creepy words. Uh-huh. Like, mutilated. <laughs> yeah. And stuff like that. And I just... Okay, the part where he stops and rewinds so that you hear it. The first thing that I thought was, oh, well, Sonny, now it's over 2,000 words. Because you repeated like six <laughs> right there. Just what a strange way of, of doing that. I, I think that's cool. I, it probably adds something to the story. But yeah, I would never have thought to do it that way. I think he wanted it to sound, you know, like something that was sent from distant far away. So it sounded degraded and crappy and stuff like that. And that was probably the most effective way. I mean, I suppose you No, could... no. The most effective way would have been to use our Zoom <laughs> recorders and whatever came out on the sound. That's what you use. That's right. Speaking of that, folks, donate to the show so we can replace our Zoom recorders. That would be awesome. We'll mention that again at the end of the yeah, episode. Sure Spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert, yes. <laughs> there's one of them now. So, uh... Is it one of them or another one? <laughs> there's, there's another one. Now. There's another one now. Okay. But yeah, I thought that was interesting. You know, I've I've been messing around with this movie that I shot in, like, I don't know, I think it was 2005 that I shot this movie with my kids as the actors. And there was a part where somebody was supposed to be sending a message through space to the superhero to come and save them. But of course, I was working with kids, so it was like a four-sentence message, so I had to have this kid do each sentence separately. Basically, I said it to her, and she repeated it back. And then I said it to her, and she repeated it back until we had the whole message. And so I had to basically do the same thing as Sonny did with this, where I had to degrade it and put, like, static flashes going through it in between all the spots and freezing and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't do any of the stuff that Sonny did with the with the audio. I think I need to do that, too, now. It's given me ideas to go back and mess with it some more, change the pitch and make it be all... for a second. That would be cool. So what do you think? How did you enjoy the production of your story, sir? Well, I, you know, I always am hypercritical. And it seems like there were a couple of sentences that he read that inadvertently rhymed. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, oh. And when you say inadvertently, you mean completely verdantly. No, not at all. <laughs> 
I mean, there, there's a number of things that you're juggling with a broken mirror story. Damn it. Sunny C. Sorry, this is all we've got for you tonight. I wish it was better, too. There's a number of things you're juggling with a triple word score story. One of them is, you know, trying to find an organic-ish way to use those three words. And another is trying to tell a entertaining or interesting or scary or, you know, exciting story. And then the other is, well, it has to be within 2,000 words. And when we were talking about wrong ingredients, I said, you know, how did you do that? And you basically cut a third out of the story. And I had in mind a, a very short story. Basically, you know, just this is what the story is going to be about. And he sends a bunch of letters home, audio letters home, because I knew it was for audio, right? And uh, So he just got out his tape recorder, started recording them. Yeah. Sending the tape the cassettes home well i mean it's supposed to be a a video <laughs> broadcast that he sends you know but because it was for our show and i knew we don't do a video show it's just dialogue the whole thing is dialogue except for the timestamps. right uh, i guess it's epistolary format in a in a way yeah ultimately i think i was 2600 words or something like that <laughs> the very first draft which to me is really close <laughs> there have been times where you're just like, oh, geez, I have to cut this in half. What am I going to do? And so basically, yeah, I just... Usually that's when you say, uh, I guess I won't enter that contest. That's, you know me pretty well. <laughs> but basically, we'll just yeah, I just took one of his entries and omitted it completely. And then with all of the remaining entries, I just, you know, made it briefer. A little, fewer details of people's names and things that they were doing and all that until it became exactly, exactly 2,000 <laughs> words. Because, yeah, that's, that's my thing. Is I, I shaved, I shaved, I shaved. Okay, it's eight words over. All right, uh, here's a sentence. Uh, okay, I shaved three words from this sentence. What's the next sentence? Uh, two words. Okay, one more word. Was not. Wasn't. Yes, 2,000 words. Send. So that's, uh, that's my process, and I know it's maddening to you, where you're just like, why do you even do that? What? Holy cow. And I can't remember, would we have penalized people if their story was 2,003 words or something like that? What? what, what? I'm pretty sure that there were people that went over. I remember somebody saying that. They're like, yeah, sorry, I couldn't get it down, so here's what you get. And I don't think anybody penalized anyone for that. I think one time Sudden Death Nicole complained that somebody didn't even use all three of their words. Well, it almost seems like there was a, a story that I read, too, where I was sure they hadn't done the words. And I can't remember if I just gave him an insanely low score or if I said, <laughs> no, disqualified, zero. Yeah, we should have penalized people for that, but we're not the kind of, we're not the hardliners. We're not going to freak out. I'm assuming you still have your full version saved somewhere? Oh, sure, yeah. You know what would be fun? Uh-oh. Make a video of this. Just some guy sitting in his room. It's, it's all just right in front of his computer. So all you have to make is a little backdrop that looks like a spaceship. Or you could even do a thing where you shoot it in front of a green screen and then just put a fakey spaceship thing behind him. Well, maybe, yeah. You have told me that there's ways to find backgrounds of you know monsters backgrounds of dinosaurs backgrounds of sunsets of waterfalls and all that stuff that you can just stick on there through the magic of uh, final cut pro or whatever you use what would be fun is if i well shaggy like i am right now with facial hair or whatever i shoot the last day first and then i go in the bathroom and i shave a little bit and i shoot the day before that do and you I go have in the bathroom one of them shave a little beard bit more. trimmers where you I do. can uh, keep changing the length. And I just make it smaller and smaller and maybe have my hair super yeah. messed up the first time and comb it a little bit each time so it's just a little yeah. more. Put some uh, dirt on your face or like some kind of blood or something on your face in the last one and then wash it off. Uh, it would be fun to make the movie because it would, it would obviously be a cheap one to make, you know, just you sitting there talking and then at the very end then there's the uh, captain, the court, what was he? Sergeant. Sergeant, who says there's another one now. He does say that. <laughs> yeah, you've got me excited about that. I want to send it. I want it to send it to Sandy. Dang it. Okay. I want to send it to Sandy and see what he says. You know, it's like, hey, here you go. I made this video. Unfortunately, it has me in it. 
The cool thing is Sonny has already made the spaceship flying through space. We could just steal that. Oh my gosh, you're right. And keep using that as the interstitials. You see the message oh, and then you and cut the, away. The, the time space. stamp comes yeah. up every time you see the ship. The ship flying by then comes back to the guy. Hey, here I am again. I'm trying to remember. I, I, I was looking through a, the notebook that this was in the other day. Because yeah, there's just so many stories in those notebooks that have never seen the light of day. And uh, I looked over my notes and there was like a two paragraph of this is what I think the story should be about. And this is what I think would be interesting. And I, I think there were two points that I wanted to make. And one was I wanted to explore a guy s slowly losing his mind. And then the other was I wanted... I, you know, just like a long distance relationship thing is, you know, the, what would it be like if, you know, you're, she's your fiance and each day you haven't seen her and, and all that. And I, I, I think I accomplished one of the two goals, but yeah, I don't know how, I, I have no idea. You know, if you were separated from your wife and she actually loved you, what kind of communication you would have, because how in depth would you go about what you've been doing each day, especially if you only had 2000 words. <laughs> it's it's the uh, spaceship equivalent of Twitter. Yeah, and then I I I didn't also didn't want to tip my hand too early, but you know so he, he brings up the worms and he brings up the blind girl, but I didn't want him to exhibit any hints of madness about it because yeah the sergeant comes on at the end and he tells what actually was going on, that Alexi you know died before any of these messages ever started coming through and. I don't know, because there's one early, early on where he goes, what's that? Right? Yeah, he's like, did you hear that? Did you hear that? That's what it is. And then there's that other one where he goes, pets are fun, and it cuts off. <laughs> yeah, but that was just weird the way Sonny <laughs> said that. I don't think it was meant to be weird. That's why I said pets are fun at the very beginning of the episode. It's because it was just such a weird thing to say. And uh, yeah, is this guy so stupid he doesn't know that they're going to eat the turkey? <laughs> pets are fun. Especially when they're dinner. <laughs> Are they going to eat that turkey, or are they going to breed it uh, yeah. and eat its children? Yeah, I'm sure it's going there to make many, many, Breeding many more stock. turkeys. That's why they're keeping it on the treadmill, so that it doesn't get too out of shape, and it can't perform its duties. <laughs> I hate to be so enamored with my own stories, guys. I, I mean, because I, I know it must sound like I'm a douche, but uh, I do love that he would forget that it's called a turkey, and he keeps calling it a chicken. That, to me, is amusing. Yeah, well, it's fun. I mean, I, I've done this before. You haven't heard this story or read this story, I'm sure. Nor least, will I ever. At least a year, right? This one? Yeah. Well, yeah, not, not since 2013 or whenever the contest whenever was. Whenever you finished writing it. So now suddenly here it is, out of the past. You'd probably forgotten the majority of it. Like, I've done that. I, I do this blog for the family. Just It's basically talking about, you know, yeah, we went to Disneyland and we saw this or we did this over the weekend and it was fun. You know, kind of stuff where, where I just talk about what we did. But I write it like I write. And so, you know, it's got my jokes in it and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the thing is that I don't go back and read these blog posts. Ever? Not very often. Every now and then I will go back and read one from like, oh, oh yeah, the, uh, what about this one that happened in 2009 or something? And I'll go back and I'll look at it and it'll crack me up. And I'll be like, man, I love this guy that writes this stuff. <laughs> he really knows my sense of humor, man. <laughs> okay, yes, I, I, have, I know exactly where you're coming from. Because <laughs> little jokes that, that I think are amusing, the future me is going to think are amusing too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know? I mean, you... There's a reason you write what you write, and it's because you think it's good and you like it, and that's the kind of thing that, you know, I would assume in a perfect world, if you could have the, the, the perfect writer for you, it would be you writing stories that you hadn't thought of before. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it would be perfectly tailored for you. So you can't be ashamed of enjoying your own story, because obviously if it was written for anybody, it was written for you. I mean, yes, uh, you would love to read George R. R. Martin's next novel and all that. But if you had that in front of you and then a novel that you wrote in 2024, <laughs> you'd definitely grab your own novel. Yeah. 
not because you're a better writer than George R. R. Martin, but because, yeah, that speaks to you. And also, it's going to encourage the crap out of you when you read it. It's like, wow. Yeah. This is really good. Oh, no. Second person. <laughs> YA. Oh. <laughs> It's all anyone's written. Oh, and the character has a ridiculous name like Pris or Katniss. Oh, geez. <laughs> so the writing of this story, you spoke a little bit about it, that you wrote down a paragraph saying you wanted this and that. Did the words... Oh, we never did these questions for you. Those three questions. We didn't do the few questions for you we either. We didn't, yeah. I should have... Okay, well, who's your favorite doctor? My favorite doctor is uh, the guy who checks my urine sample... When I go, that's not a doctor. That's just like it's a homeless guy. They said, "How how would you like to have my, something warm?" Okay, my favorite doctor is Doctor Pepper. Okay, moving on. Right. <laughs> I had a little bit of that today, so that's right. Well, we asked fourteen people the same dang questions. I need to piss right now because of Doctor Pepper. So there you go. What's your favorite doctor? Jack Kervorkian. Okay. Uh, Someone you will be meeting sometime soon? Yeah, well, if people don't like the story. <laughs> okay, your so, words. Yeah. How, how much did these words influence the story? Because your words were pretty, aside from George Lucas, which you've kind of found a clever way around, I guess, George Lucas, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, it's used well. But it's not like George Lucas was a character in the story, obviously. And your other words were kind of generic. What was it? Report and, and squads, squads, which are pretty relatively generic. You could throw into almost any story, it seems. Did they push you in any way with your story? Or was it all just kind of, meh, you came up with a story and here's this, that, that? No, those three words informed the story. I mean, George Lucas was the hardest one. Mm-hmm. But squads instantly, I thought, military, right? Uh-huh. And reports that ah. these are journal entries kind of thing. And, yeah, George Lucas, I don't know how I came up with... Okay, well, the ship is called George Lucas because in the future, all Verne class ships are named after famous sci-fi writers. I do love having people in the future not get, like, our details completely right. Like, the... Marilyn Monroe was this princess or something like that <laughs> right. in the 19th century in, in that Australia. other story. Oh, she was an Australian <laughs> princess, the most beautiful woman who ever lived. And I, I don't know if that really, really amuses me. But, and that same one, Walt Disney had been, like, deified, do you remember? Yeah. And so they'd say, Walt, damn it. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm talking about another episode that nobody... Heard. Yeah, nobody even remembers. Your lives are lesser for it. Yeah, that was a uh, an audio drama on That Gets My Goat. So I'm pretty sure nobody, well, we'll say 10% of the people listening now actually heard that. So what's 10% of nine listeners? <laughs> Point nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if there's an amputee among you, you listened to that episode. But yeah, those those three words totally informed this story. I didn't have any... This wasn't a story that existed before the, that drawing of the three, which I don't know that we ever called it, but we should have. We if did. we ever do another triple word score story contest, we'll make a big deal of the drawing of the three. I'm pretty sure we called it that, but it's been so long that it's completely slipped your mind. Uh, that's cool. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Is writing fun for you? Are you... No, I can't remember. What What were all the questions? Can you remember them? The three questions were, uh, did you enjoy? Is, normal, is writing normally fun for you? How did you determine in what way to use the words? Did the words inspire the story? Or did you already have this story in mind? So basically we've, we've answered them all. We've basically gone through it all. Okay, good. And your favorite doctor was Kevorkian. Good. The, his name has always been really entertaining yeah. to me. It's too bad he's so famous that you can't use it just in a story for some other character. That's one of those things that you and I have recently jumped on the bandwagon and started keeping a, a list of goofy names to use later in stories. Yeah, well, there's these names, yes, that are so ugly that they're memorable. And what was the one that we both wrote last year? We both put, incorporated into what we were writing. It was 
Dallas Girk. There you go. But Big and I both put a character called Dallas Girk in our writing. And I shouldn't be so proud of it, but more proud than winning a triple word score contest is getting Big to write Dallas Girk as a character. Too. Yeah. I mean, just what an ugly name, guys. Unfortunately, you'll probably never hear the story about Dallas Girk. Well, it's not about Dallas Is Girk. he the guy that has sexual intercourse with his car? No, no. He's the friend of the guy in the That Damned Cat story. Oh, that's right. And so I'm pretty sure that no one will ever hear that story because the nine listeners that we do have will turn very quickly to point nine, as we have learned in the past. I want people to clamor for That Damned Cat. They're just like, hey, I want to read that. That sounds great. They won't. But yeah, good old Dallas Girk. <laughs> I don't know. Big has this fun tendency to incorporate the names of people who donate to the show into his stories. Right? Yeah. Like he'll go through. And that's another thing is like, I have no idea where all these names. So where, Bruce Otterson, where did that come from? I've never known anybody named Bruce or Otterson. It's been long enough. I don't know where any of the names came from. We didn't get any of the ones that I you over and over and over again. There's so like three or four. Butikofer? Right. There's three or four uh, go-to <laughs> names that I have that are in rotation. And yeah, none of them appeared in this. There was no one named Bice. <laughs> uh, the, uh, one of the worms was called Bice. Oh, you just didn't get to know it by its name. <laughs> There's another one of them now. <laughs> Uh, is there anything more we need to talk about? Is this good? I don't know. Is there anything more you'd like to talk about about this story? Is there anything... Uh... Well, Sonny made the trailer where the, he created a virtual spaceship. And I guess they're all virtual now, right? Unless they build the Millennium Falcon again for like a Force Awakens or something. But he built a spaceship and he did like a flyby. And I think he showed me three or four like works in progress. One where it doesn't have a skin on it yet. And one where it doesn't oh. have shadows or whatever. One where it doesn't have any internal lights. And that was really, really cool. I mean, you had said that one of your dreams was, I don't think it was to go to a movie based on a story that you, oh, one of your dreams was to have an action figure of a character that you created. Yes, I would like to and do that. And you're just like, oh, gosh, that would be so cool. And and this, to have somebody make an animated... A movie of a spaceship that you wrote the story to. It's almost that. Yeah, it, I was just really impressed by that, really flattered, and think that that's, that's cool. Every, everyone should have a friend like you. Yeah, I haven't spoken to Sonny in a long, long time. If he's still listening, thank you. <laughs> for uh, for doing this he's done uh, videos or animation or that sort of thing in the past for us too but uh, we publish stories we do episodes so infrequently that yeah um, there was a an episode did... i want to say it was the bottom of the well oh the poem the yeah brian wrote? that one the poem that brian wrote where he had done a a preview trailer for that and it took so long for us to ever get around to putting out the episode that we'd forgotten that the trailer existed. And so in the lead up to the episode, we didn't post it. And I felt really crappy for forgetting about it. And so I posted it afterwards. said, hey, everybody, look at this. Well, it's a preview for the episode we just put out. But I made sure to remember this time around. And I just very recently posted the uh, trailer for... Greetings from the Ninth Sector. So hopefully you guys saw that on Facebook or whatever in the lead up. If you didn't, it's there. You can go check it out. Look at this spaceship that Sonny made, which is freaking... It's really cool. And um, I'm really tempted to make this movie now. It would be pretty fun. The one that we were just talking about? Yeah. I could find a background that we could just use off of the internet really quick. I may actually already have some because I've started setting some of that kind of stuff aside because I wanted to make a movie with my kids again, like the one I was mentioning. Yeah, I bet we could make it in a day. I could go to work. We could turn on the lights at the green screen. We could do it in half hour, an hour. It would be fun. We just have to get some kind of little costume. And it wouldn't even have to be that big of a costume, probably just upper body of a costume. Some kind of space military outfit. 
A silver jumpsuit. Big has this obsession that, <laughs> that silver equals futuristic because Big grew up in the 1950s. <laughs> I just love that kind of semi-cheesy thing, you know, where everything is like silver lame. <laughs> Anyways, I guess that's our episode for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Once again, we'll bring back up the spoiler that we uh, told you about before. If you have maybe some leftover cash hanging around somewhere that you'd like to uh, contribute to our fund drive, what do you call it? Our donation drive that we're trying to, we're trying to replace some of our equipment that has gotten old and shabby. Yeah, I think it's probably safe to say that this will be the last episode we record using these this recorder. Yeah. It, it's not dependable. Sometimes there's terrible sound. Sometimes it goes out. Uh, sometimes it's fine. Right now it's but, working, so but that's there's good. No, there's no predicting what's going to set it off. It's kind of like your wife. <laughs> yeah, I, I said last week, last week, geez. I said last episode that uh, I was going to promise something for people that donate. So people that, that donate... I just completed work on a Rish Outcast, which is my solo podcast, where I record, as far as I know, the only audio recording of an uncollected Stephen King story. And it's like a 90 minutes, the longest episode I've done. You can listen to it or you can, you know, virtually tear it up and, and not listen to it if you choose. <laughs> but you can donate. listen to Rish's recording of it only if you donate. It's one of those where he's going to send you the link to download it to your email. It's not going to appear on your regular feed, right? Well, I, I, we've discussed this before. I mean, I, mean I, I don't own the story. So you can't really so I put can't, it out there. You I, just got to kind of underhandedly send it to somebody and say, here, this is something I did for fun. Enjoy it. Right. I, it's been so long since we've done one of those, I can't remember how to do it. I was trying to think, <laughs> now, wait, I, pub I upload it, but then how do I, what? Where is it? Because when you upload something, usually I embed it in my blog, and then I have a right-click here if you want to uh -huh. download it. But there's there's got to be a third option for what we do with this, where it's like, okay, here's the link, but it's only a link you can go to if you know the address. <laughs> right? Yeah, I will teach Rish. Reteach. Yes, how, how we used to do that. And uh, he will send you a uh, story for you to check out. Yeah, and then in the future, we've got to work on another Dune Steep incentive episode. I think the last one we did was the one where Marshall came over to your house. Which has been a long time. It was a long time ago. And uh, Marshall hasn't been allowed at my house for years. Well, he, he did kick the dog. There's yeah, no we there. used to have a dog. That guy's pretty strong. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed the triple word story contest. Uh, now that we're finished, maybe we'll consider starting in on another contest. We'll have to see. We'll talk about it. And uh, then we'll tell you about it later. I hope. Yeah. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm uh, Corporal Rish Outfield, <laughs> signing out from the, uh, the 69th sector. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. There's another one now. That's a fun. From the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine, thanks for listening. The Doonstief is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. Take two. Something tells me you're going to say there's another one now all throughout this damn episode. <laughs> Nope, that's going to be you. Aww. <laughs> snot important, particle man. Did you say snot important? Gross. <clears throat> Greetings from the Ninth Sector by Rish Outfield, champion of all his own contests. Hello, Miss Whitlock. I'm Sergeant Ramon Bradley with some bad news... Your friend, fiancé, Corporal Otterson, has had a breakdown. There's another one now. 
and droid. Stay. Bark, bark, quack, tail. Good boy. Good boy. Really big? Seriously?